2051. OF Project Research continued, focusing development on the pod device. Once the ultimate green pod was developed, the OF Project ended, focus turning to the RX Project. 2055. New, standardized RX-T2 enters development. 2063. R1 class models, R1A through R1J created by modifying minor parts. 2065. With the unification of the MMU, manned mobile unit, R1 series production ceases. 2067. R2 series, RXT2 base, enters use. The MMU becomes standardized. 2075. R twin engine developed. R2 series ends with model R2D. Production of R3 series begins. Units interchangeable due to MMU standardization. 2083. R3 models become ready for use. Equipping twin engines gives this series high mobility. 2088. Development of low output model wave cannon started. 2098. Exploration spacecraft rolled out. Its development is based on a new theory. 2102. Forerunner, an exploration craft, begins maiden journey and is expected to return on June 27, 2120. 2103. Compact R engine successfully equipped to a ship. RS-3E unit engine, a low output engine, completed. 2104. R-4 series with E unit engine finished. 2108. Low output wave cannon completed. Development begins on R-5 series spaceships. 2112. Forerunner receives a signal from dimensional space of an unusual living body and energy signature. 2115. R5 series unit equipped with a low output wave cannon asteroid blaster. This craft was not provided for public use due to this special weapon. 2120. Forerunner returns with a sample of the Bido a compact, high-energy, living organism. This organism was part of the Bido Empire, which had assimilated an entire solar system. The Empire continued expanding, assimilating entire planets, on a direct course for Earth. 2121. R-Series selected for missions against the Bido. 2122. Production of general operation models halted with RF-5 due to increased weapons development. 2123. Development begins on the experimental RX-6. Though pilotless, it has a high output wave cannon. 2125. Compact high energy organic weapons project started in a lab near Jupiter. 2134. Contact with the project lab near Jupiter is lost. Skyhope spacecraft investigates and finds 3 million meters of space missing. A Bido fragment, itself a high energy object with a diameter of 6 meters, is located in the missing space area that included the lab. This object is retrieved for study. 2136. Experimental R7 model requiring a pilot and equipped with a high output wave cannon is introduced. 2141. Succeeded in controlling the super compact high energy Bido fragment found in 2134. Dubbed a force. 2143. An experiment combining the force with the R7 fails. Attaching the force to the rear of the craft causes the regulator to overheat when the cannon is fired. This resulted in evaporation of the craft. Cause was determined to be insufficient power provided by the E-unit engine. The force was unharmed by the disaster. 
2144. Development of an artificial force begins. 2147. Unmanned spacecraft RX-8 is finished. It's equipped with three Type 4 R engines and two E units. 2151. Results of RX-8 wave cannon experiment are a success. Force experiments were also completed. 2153. Decided to develop RX-8 for pilots, resulting in the R-9 series. 2154. High output wave cannon finalized. These are 5.7 times more powerful than low output units. 2160. Though an overall success, artificial forces, dubbed bit devices, are still unstable. 2162. Prototype R9A Arrowhead completed. A highly mobile patrol unit with a low output wave cannon. 2163. Bido Mission 1 begins. An R-9A Arrowhead Squadron is assigned for the first space battle for the people of Earth. Blast off and attack the evil Bido Empire! Welcome to Let's Play R-Type. The beginning of what is the proper R-Type saga. This is the game where it all began. I'm playing the Turbo Graphics version. This, um, it was originally released for the arcade, I do believe. But, the uh, Turbo Graphics version, if memory serves, is one of the most loyal to the arcade. The R-Type Saga, as has been explained before, is also very well known for its difficulty, but not in that it's a kind of twitch difficulty and you have to be really skilled, though it is, but more for its memorization. They will kill you. A lot. Until you learn. So let's take our R9 and go off and attack the evil Bido Empire. I love this game. I love this game so much. I love that intro. The music. You can charge up your gun now, so that's a thing. Now, if memory serves, there's a dude that shows up, and your force shows up. The force, a piece of Bido flesh. That has managed to be contained using the little uh, containment rod device things that are actually on the side of the force. It's only the orange thing in the center that is the actual force. The control rods are there to keep it in check and not be Bido. Now, one thing I could have done here is shoot that out, though it's a little late to matter at this point. And then we can shoot layers, lasers. Now, as you gain things, your force powers up, and you can tell that just by the um, control rods actually powering up. At first, it was they were very tiny, and the force didn't actually shoot anything. But the force now has two control rods sticking out of the side. There are three different power-ups you can get directly for the force, which are the blue lasers, the red laser here, which I call the DNA beam, and is easily my favorite. And then a yellow one that we haven't seen. So I'm going to keep, if at all possible, the DNA beam. Also, then, the little red thing floating above me is called a bit. It's an artificial force. They couldn't actually replicate the full force of the, um... They couldn't actually replicate the full force of the force artificially, so instead they did what they could. 
and made the tiny bits which you get. And that is stage one. I haven't even, like, there's so much I want to talk about with this game. The two big clamp things there in stage one, stage one is probably the most memorable. The guy that we fought, the boss of stage one is actually a recurring boss in the R-Type saga. And he's known as being kind of a gatekeeper to the Bido realm. So where we've gone now is into Bido space. And then there's like the big hands that were in the beginning of the previous, or not in the beginning, but uh, like partway through the previous level, which really was just something that they did aesthetically. But, um, it was kind of taken to be, this is the big orange one, by the way. It shoots out sideways and then runs along the walls and stuff. It's kind of all right. They're all kind of all right. I just prefer the DNA beam. But, um, it's, those are actually so well known that a lot of people would copy R-Type. A lot of people would actually copy and try to rip off our type And one thing that they would almost always do is um, copy that. Now, this dude here, you can't actually kill. You can destroy all the little block things on him, but you can't actually kill him. But that does take us to the stage two boss. boss fight pretty much consists of this thing going in and out of these tubes. And what you want to do is, like, get down here! Where you can shoot this blue eyeball when it opens up. And if you can just camp right here, then you're generally doing pretty good for yourself. And I'm going to save. Have I mentioned that I'm going to save state the crap out of this game? Because I am. Yes! That barnacle thing, also a very well-known boss in R-Type land. Stage 2 cleared in all of 6 minutes. I don't remember how many levels long R-Type is. Oh. Well, let's see here, do I want... You know, I'll get it. Yet another thing that R-Type is, like, super famous for is this, especially at the time, is this one stage, which the whole stage is this battleship. This is it. It's They just did so much at the time that was so fantastic. Hey, DNA beam. I want a DNA beam. slowly destroying this entire ship. Can I destroy you? Thank you. Not quite as well as I'd like to destroy it. Now, one kind of neat thing about the force is it can shoot backwards. If I don't die. Wow, I... It's been that long. I'm going to have to rely on the oops, on the fact that I'm not getting shot. That is a good thing to rely on. You can shoot the force off, as I showed previously. Am I gonna die if I stay down here? I'm gonna die if I stay down here, aren't I? Yeah, I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die. No, I'm not! I'm gonna live! No, I'm not! I'm gonna die! Okay, so they are going to make me get out front here. I didn't even see what it is that hit me. Okay, that was me walking into a bullet. I don't know what hit me that time, though. Oh, uh, okay, they give me, like, no room to move! I was so nervous! And the boss music starts. I kind of want to go back there. I 
I kind of want to go back there. Yeah. How did I get the camera stuck this far ahead? It's supposed to be, like, way farther back. No, I want the force behind me. I really want the force behind me. So I can destroy that. That Now it's just a matter of me not dying. How did I get the camera stuck this far ahead? Yes! completely forget how long our type is. I want to say it's like six stages, which... Actually, you know what? I think it's eight stages. So, let's go one more stage. We got one more stage. We're doing it. Doing it. Doing it. One more stage. One more fighting into the Bido Empire. Now, this stage is like kind of an annoying stage. And I do not want blue for this stage. reason I do not want blue for this stage, I also don't want any more speed power-ups. You can speed up to almost ridiculous extents. You can speed up to almost ridiculous extents, and I'd kind of like not to. This is a nice comfortable speed for me. And there's no way to speed down other than dying. Yes! A second bit! And more missiles! I kind of want to keep the DNA beam, just because, um, especially in this a area... Actually, you know what? I'm going to save. Wow, you guys did not like me. I'm going to save and then get this one, and then see how that works. Yeah, that doesn't work at all. Let's not get it. Because a large portion of this level is the destroying of these things. And the DNA beam makes that so much easier. It's like, I can't even conceive of doing this with, like, anything else. I think I tried this with, like, the little blue laser things at one point, and they... They can destroy things! What's this boss? What's this boss? Is this, this is the boss I think it is? Yet another boss that, like, everybody ripped off because it was like, hey, this is a big important thing. And then I ran into a laser. Can I shoot any part of you? I think I can shoot you. You have to shoot the green things, is the thing. And then, like, not ram directly into it. One down! Yes! Well, that was easy. The Bido Empire's got nothing on save states. That'll do it, though. Until next time, everyone, we continue our battle against the Bido Empire.